groaning, come on, on percent out from beating the geography if you are in the lead. We can't let Jockey surely beat us on the return that we give him. So come on, let's 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 get those extra uh, <coughs> get those extra, a few extra percent from the jockey on the uh, otherwise come on. Yeah. Um, and it's our fifth and final Alright. Um, so pop quiz for chapter six. Uh, oh, regarding the update, everybody should realise there's an update of the notes that's been pushed. Um, so you should all have got notification of that and downloaded. So there's lots of typo bashing and um, uh, typo, typo changes and also the additional parts. So you've got part three now. Okay, okay so. Let's get on to these uh, self-assessment questions, the pop quiz for chapter 6. So, okay, what's the significance of the zero star interface? Who wants to? He's late, but he should be answering these questions. It's penitence. Okay, so what's the, what's the uh, significance of the zero star interface? Yes? Uh, it laid the foundation for the future work, so... Yeah. It laid the foundation for future work. So the Xerox Star interface laid the foundation for everything that we are uh, pretty much doing now. Can somebody tell me an interface that doesn't conform to something that looks a lot like the Xerox Star interface? Yes. Metro, come on. Yes, Metro doesn't conform to the Xerox Star interface, okay? So why is that though? So it's not trying to emulate a desktop experience, it's trying to emulate a kind of information space, so more like a dashboard kind of tool than like that. So, so, so that's, that's, that's one way they've gone. Why, why, why was it created by this then? Why, why is the desktop not so great anymore? Or more than slightly out of the way? Huh? Touch screens, touch screens and uh, mobile devices and uh, uh, see the desktop fall out of favor, obviously. Yeah, why wasn't it? It wasn't a commercial success because it was super, super expensive. And Xerox part, well, not Xerox part, but Xerox screwed up. So Xerox pulled the company just like it was out to get wide. So they spent 10 years developing it and said, oh, that's what, we don't want this anymore. We're going to do copies. And there we are, that's why we got cut and, you know, that's why they went for copies. But it's certainly, you know, if they'd have pushed it, I think also you need a certain level of, you need a certain environment in the TV to be the right time. To, and they were, what they were, one of the, one of the things they were trying to do with Xerox, uh, uh, with Xerox Star, is that they were trying to make it more personal assistant for Secretary of at that time. And so, you know, how managers didn't want to invest so much money on people that they saw at the time as being higher on than the rest of them. Right? So, you know, you're not going to buy the best stuff that somebody who sat outside that they think is on your web if you like that in the 60s and 70s, so free. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not going to talk about the five main principles, but who wants to pick one of them? Yes. Mobile business interactions. Oh. Um, so, having mobile business interactions. Having mobile business interactions on the next one, that was that easy. So, this is where sometimes you have loads. So you've got this idea of mobile interaction, so therefore one of the things is that you don't need to switch modes between them, so enter the So tell me some of the products nowadays that actually still have modes. Some products that John Nathan would like, maybe. Huh? Vim. Yes, Vim. So Vim has got modes, of course it has, yes. Old school, if you're into that kind of thing, yes. Exactly with the laptop, it's still press function and then mode into the keyboard and then mode. Yeah. Yeah, you can still press function and then uh, that's a different mode. It's kind of slightly different though, because what they're trying to do, yeah, well, maybe it's a bit too Yeah, maybe it's a Yeah. You press the keys on, you press it. Yeah, yeah. You do it with the keys button. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what about another one? Another principle. 
Yes. Uh, so put the name, but there's this to a part, everything is visual. So everything is visual. Is, um, nothing can happen with that. Yeah, nothing with, with, should happen without actually being told that it's happening. Okay, so therefore we should get information and look back on what we're doing. Yeah, good. Anything else? I noticed this side of the room's gone silent this week. What's going on? I think we're just talking over that side. Go on. Anything else? Another one. Okay, well, let's make sure you know those five. What does GOM stand for? What does G stand for? For GOM. Oh. Goals. Goals. Okay, so goals, operators, methods, and such. And what, what, what does goals, why do I, why is there even a question there? What do you mean, why am I asking about goals? What? It's to do with like understanding what humans want to do, what their goals are. Okay, so it's understanding what humans want to do, what their goals are, what they want to do. And how does this fit into the hierarchy of these kinds of cognitive models? Anyone, any ideas how this fits into this kind of hierarchy? What came after goals? Keystroke, KL, no? Keystroke level, okay, came after goals. Why are you even saying goals up there? Why does it matter? What came before it? No? Human processor, card, neural, yes? Human processor came before this, right? Okay. So, is there a is there currently is there um, a piece of software where that allows us to kind of implement even a very rudimentary version of these cognitive models? Yes or no? Is there a piece of software? No. Yes. No. Yes. Who thinks yes? Couple of hands there. So out of the entire class, and when I say entire class, I'm talking the entire the people who are present, obviously. The entire class, two people say that there is a piece of software that allows us to do cognitive models. So if this was a focus group, how do I make this better? If this was a focus group, you'd all be right, and these guys would be all right, so you get your view. But your view's crap. You're all wrong. Right, yes, these two are right. There is, there is a piece of software that allows us to, to, uh, to do this kind of cognitive model. And I keep saying cognitive model, what do you think the name of that tool might be? It's a tool for cognitive models. Any ideas? For God's sake, it's Cogtool, right? It's there in the thing. Cognitive models, it's a tool for cognitive models. Cogtool, it's a Cogtool, Carnegie Mellon University. And we've shown you loads of graphs with uh, really interesting uh, uh, developers, uh, psychology, psychological uh, uh, development. Okay, so it's Cogtool. Um, I'm not going to ask for the 10 main principles of efficient design. How do, well, what are Schneiderman's rules? Do we know what Schneiderman's rules are? Has anybody gone back and looked at the collated, the collated uh, principles? Who is Schneiderman? Anybody know, any ideas of who Schneiderman might be? It's like, what is this for? Any ideas who Ben Schneiderman might be? So Schneiderman is the most cited human computer interaction author on the planet. Ben Schneiderman, right? That's works out in Maryland. That's who he is. Okay, Schneiderman has a number of rules, a number of Schneiderman's rules, and we collated those rules and put them with loads of others and came to a Okay, so it seems to me that on chapter six, you guys need to do some more. Would we agree? 
Yes, I agree. Okay. So let's get to, let's move away from this and get back to what we were talking about last week, which was gamification as part of engagement. Okay. So gamification as part of engagement. So we were talking about whether gamification is a good thing, whether gamification is a bad thing. So just before we get back to that discussion, because I'll want your opinion, and I've got a couple of slides here just to get you so that you realise that I'm going to be asking questions again. Okay, so get ready, get ready to answer. Get ready to give me your thoughts. And if you haven't looked at gamification, quickly read it now so that you've got something to uh, talk about. So gamification, here's another aspect of gamification. So here we have Tini. So you can put on think who's heard of Think Geek? A few people. Nobody's bought any really geeky stuff from Think Geek. My God. You have got a t-shirt that says I read your email or these kind of things. You can't get those. Anyway, Think Geek, it's an online shop uh, for geeks like us or Think anyway. Um, and you can obviously buy stuff from there. Now here, you can put your little tinny sticker from the monkey on the map. Why does this matter? Why is this a bit of gamification? Why do you, why do you care about this? Mike? You have to sign up to, uh, to do it. So you have to sign up to do it, although technically, probably, if you bought something from the you already have, but yeah, you have to sign up to do this bit. Anything else? <laughs> it would be a competition sticker for the first of your area to be on the map. Yeah, so the competition sticker would be called the first of your area to see if you're on the map, you know which area you want. Yes? Is that an acceptable way of harvesting data from the user system? Yeah, it's an acceptable way of harvesting and also displaying data. So you might have problems displaying data um, that's part of your billing information for um, privacy reasons, right? If you, if you put the stick on the little um, stick on the map, then that says something. So they can look at, they can then describe their reach. They can understand and describe to others what their reach is. Why also is it important that they display this as opposed to just keep it themselves? In a gamification game mode, yeah, more people want to participate. More people want to participate because you want to see people in your area buying stuff, they're putting their tinny on the map, so you want to put your tinny on the map, right? That's the way that this kind of stuff works. And if that's not enough, look at the look at the thing that they're doing to try and get you through it. A hundred dollars. See a hundred dollars you have a hundred dollars. So a hundred dollars of their own stuff. So it's a gift certificate. So they're not actually, you know, it's not really a hundred dollars because it's a hundred dollars gift certificate. But you can win if you do this. So that's an extra it's a financial encouragement to get into <coughs> So that's how important they consider this to be. Okay? They want your information to be put on a map so that then they can get more people to join up and put more people and then we'll let their stickers on the map. Which shows there's some kind of bizarre community. This question we notice. <coughs> what is a Cylon? Nobody knows what a Cylon is. Nobody watches any kind of sci fi. I can't believe, yeah, see? I can't believe computer scientists. Wasting time. Wasting time. 
Yeah, back, back at Star Galactica. That's right, so Cylon, what's Cylon? Back at Star Galactica. Nobody has ever watched Back at Star Galactica, either the original version or the, the modern version, the new version. No? My God, you guys need to you know, do something that's not... God, no, I just don't know how to talk to you now. So, and therefore, therefore, you won't know what the, what the point of this sixth Cylon is. Okay, so there's five Cylons that are imposters that look like humans, of course, and they're in there in the human, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the, uh, you know, in the human ranks. And, this, and so they would say, if there was a sixth Cylon, who should it be? And we just click on the button. And the outcome has no bearing on it. Click anything you like, and you can do the same answer, or just a random generated answer. So, why is that? Why do people care about this? Why do people? Why is it there? And why do people do it? Why do people spend time answering these questions? Why do people spend time answering these questions? Well, they're curious, but also it's because it works on parts of our psychology. Right? We like to answer questions. We know that if we can answer this question, if we can pass this, we're part of one of these groups. We're part of an exclusive group which think deep. Thinks is good. We all like to be part of the group. I mean, there's a certain table who obviously proudly display, displaying their awesomeness and awesome making, which their part of the group feel red, saying, the art of motorcycle maintenance, as is the secondary course text. And they're proudly displaying that with their books. Of course, this is, this is a, on the best one because this is the vision I have. On the school, copy, copy stained. On the front, even better. Shows it's got some age. Okay, so, who else is representing the ultimate time maintenance? Who's in our group? Oh, a few people, yeah, a few people. But all you want to want, you're outside our group now. So, you need to you need to read this. So, read the ultimate time maintenance. That's how you gamify it. So, here, they're gamifying it so that they can say, well, actually, I'm part of this group, this thing. And if you're part of this think group, group you, you know what these questions are, then, or what they mean, you can decide them, then it means that you're, that you're more likely to go back to here and buy their stuff. Okay? You're more likely to go back to here and you can buy their stuff. Now, why, I mean, that's why people buy t-shirts with various uh, bands written on them, right? So they're part of the type. To impress in a certain way, we're part of the type, we're part of the group of people, we're part of the you know, heavy rock arm dress in a certain way, that's the plan. Okay? It's very few people who see it to heavy rock concert in full suit and tie, well, that would be a really good alternative. Okay? Or in a punk concert, that would be a really alternative if they weren't dressed as punk. But you dress in a certain way, say, I'm part of, I've got membership in this group. And if you can get membership of that group where that group is surrounding a commercial entity or surrounding a website or a web presence, then you buy into that. You buy into that personality. That's why we wear brands. That's why you know, everybody's, uh, you know, lots of people wear different kinds of brands and everything brands. Okay. In fact, from common sports, <coughs> sports what, what I hope I was doing a, a question based on uh, synthesis and creation like for the exam. How would I link this to something so to do with sports in my focus? Okay, more relevant. How would I link this to um, fashion? A recent fashion story, fashion fashion story, this is there. Or even Dolce and Gabbana, right? So everybody will be trashing their Dolce and Gabbana glasses or clothing, right, supposedly. Um, Maybe, but some other people say so maybe they won't. Maybe they'll be buying more Dodger and Gabbana stuff, okay? But if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you need to then read more. Or at least listen. To be present in the world. Okay. So, here's another example of gamification. Here's the Boeing website, um, Boeing Airliners. You can see that there's a, this actually here is a flash animation, it's an interactive animation, and you've got a number of airlines have just sat around. Okay. Why is this 
So verification, what do you guys think? I'm going to give you two minutes to order your thoughts, three minutes till half past to order your thoughts, okay, before we get on to the next bit. I want to know, I'm going to come to each table, I'm going to ask people, okay, so if you're ready to say something. I want to know what you think about being paid. I suppose it's because as you pay, I wouldn't like to think that I was being paid, you know, that I was just, you know, the more people I was doing, the more I was I wouldn't like to think that, and they are, I don't know. I'm coming for that, because I'm not going to be doing that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so there's some reasons why, some times, some points where you don't want to get notifications, so it might not be like you want to get across. You don't have to put in everything. It might not be right at the time. It makes a match. Um, pay specific attention to target actions and users. The point is, that with all of this stuff, as we've seen today, with engagement, how quantifiable do you think all this is? Before the event, how quantifiable is it? It's difficult to understand whether they're getting everything, whether they're finding it as fun as you think they are, whether they <coughs> release it, before you release it, whether they're finding it to be a fun thing, whether they're finding the social value to be good. The only way you can really know this is to release it and see whether you get an increase. So that you can actually see the longitudinal in the wild, as it's called, in the, in the wild evaluation, which we'll be looking at later on today in the next lecture. That's the only way that you can really understand whether there's been an, an enhancement. Because it's so difficult to quantify these kind of um, um, emotional um, developments, okay, these emotional concepts. It's really difficult. Okay. So remember, what's this? Slide for each, for each game, game final level. Okay. 
Okay, so, uh, got a break, come back at, um, well, I missed a lot, let's see. Come back at um, 7 minutes past 11, and we're slightly late today, but that's okay. We'll make that up. Um, yeah, come back at uh, 7 minutes past. Alright, we're going to get a copy of all. So generally it's got a leaderboard, it's got friends and a leaderboard. So you get the social activities, you get the social stuff that we're talking about as part of this phonology. But then you also have this leaderboard of, yeah, okay, so that's good. Anybody else? <coughs> yeah. Um, so work last year I was thinking, um, does this guy have the idea of developing a game for when you commit a phone and they get to the test and it's supposed to not have the test breaking when you commit? If you committed and the test broke, then your character in the game would lose something or something like that. Oh. And so that might help people remember to run the test before they commit. But then it could be people concentrating too much on commuting really often. 
to get more points in the game rather than actually doing work. Oh, right, okay. So we've got a thing here where we're talking about committing uh, software, so we're committing uh, uh, versions in a repo. What? what? <coughs> yeah, right here. So committing the version to a repo, and therefore, um, and if you if all your tests pass, I presume the tests are on drone or something like. Um, oh right, okay, yeah. So, um, so if the tests pass, once you're committed, then your if the character in the game gets extra points, or but if they don't, they get less points or they die or something like. Oh, that's good. Like but it might be a problem with, it could obviously be a problem that you're too focused on testing and committing. And does it check how much you've committed, how much you've done, or could you just keep committing? I'm not sure, it's kind of just an idea. Yeah, or could it check, because also you can speak the test right, because you can just, you can actually write a bad test and just make the test that all just gives you positive. Yeah, okay, so you can speak that all. Yeah, good. Okay, let's move to the next, let me just talk to the So it could get you into something. It could be good to encourage you to do stuff, but it could take a lot of your time. Yeah. So this memorise thing now. Are you doing all? Are you sort of like super, super awesome at uh, language, but really terrible at repeats on? Because you spend all your time memorising. <laughs> yes, fine. You see, we need to gamify this class. Okay. Well, I think you guys should have never left. Oh no, all four of you. Let's pretend you're all yeah. on the table. We've all got some, got some issues with sitting together with the phone. So it's generally when you're trying to get a reward, it could be used for negative purposes because that's what we're trying to do to get the reward to that point. Okay. So that's the thing. I think that's a good point. In a lot of cases, it's hijacking an innate reward system in our brain. Like if something is built from the ground up with a game system in it, that's okay. So when something falls apart at this point, heroin in our service um, will make you sort of disturb in your brain. Yeah. Very good, a nice, a nice nuanced bit here where we're talking about, you know, last week we were talking about the three levels of gamification, and of two of them, one of them is from the ground up and one of them is bolt on. And we were really saying if it's from the ground up, that might be a good thing because that's what the intention is. And we know that the bolt on thing might not be because it's just trying to, you know, just trying to use our psyche to, uh, to trick us pretty much. Okay, so about this table. I've actually been talking a bit, so, so now you're all on silent. Yes, to be clear, we've got the dogs in the market, and they went, I don't think we can have a big game because we know they are playing because of the white dogs in the market. Yes, yeah, yeah, so if you know, if you know they're trying to game five, then you make it work, don't you? If you know that this is what they're trying to do, you can't have to be that sort of thing. I mean, that's why, that's why the smell of the bread baking is pumped out of 
the bakery and supermarkets to print, and that's why the bakery is at the back. So you have to move the work, move all the way through the products so that you can get to the nice stone bread which you're going to buy the products and then you're not the bread. That's why, yes, sir? So I want to say, like, the gamification in school when it helps you, like, improve your actual life, like, learn things, it's memorizing words and so on, but it could be really horrible and it just transforms, transforms you into another reality and, like, gamifying things that would bring back something to you. Yeah. So, it's so when it comes to it, some of the reality, when gamifying things doesn't bring back something to you, so that's, that's, that's a good point, actually, because as we'll see in the net, in well, the next time, part of course, ethics, when we go to ethics, ethics requires us to, if we're having participants, that those participants are also beneficiaries of putting participants to work in some way. So this is one of the way of also connecting that together, yeah. If you think about it, it's always, it's like a role where you have the bad side and the good side, and depending on how you use something, you either go too much with the bad side or too much with the good side. For example, stack overflow, where you have the badges and so on, so if you see like a question which you can answer, you answer the question, you get some writing and so on. But then if you want to get more, I think you need to answer more difficult questions, which would obviously cost some time to research and to see how to answer. So it consumes too much time, so we are going to one of the extremes. Right, so the easy questions are answered, but the, yeah, the easy questions are answered, but the other ones are the hard ones, and not the answer, because there's a gamification to get Okay, what is that answer to the Yes. It's a bit like we have some future technology to us. It has proven to be very effective and it's probably going to be used for evil purposes at some point. So we may as well try and make the most of the good side and we kind of encourage that in the other you know, the positive side. Yeah. So kind of encouraging things like education or building communities rather than like because the bad side will always happen, so we may as well be quite happy to the good side. The bad side will always happen to we're going to fight back with the good side because uh, yeah, that's not that important, yeah, it's a bit like nuclear ground. Okay, so about this one, we're going to keep it so we're not going to be secure. Any questions? Okay, so we're going to It's all been said, it's all been said, we're all going to keep it said. I hope to be more than that on the exam. Yes. Um, it's being used to school girls. And when you get what, like, get stickers and stuff in school for doing things well. I remember doing that in primary school. <coughs> and I know like my cousins were like quite a lot of ones. Like said that they had them sort of things done in school. We have like a notice board up with everyone's name. You get stickers and stuff in good. And at the end of the week you can wear stickers in the class. Oh really? That's being done for years. See, I'm so old in my school we never had that kind. <laughs> we didn't have stickers. We just had it in the reverse way. If we did something bad we got the cane. <laughs> we took the punishment, we didn't mean something good, we didn't, everything was just left silent. We just presumed we were doing good. Okay, because we weren't in the paper. That's, that's how we did things. Back, back in the old days, as you say. Okay, good. So, my personal view on this is, is I go back to Ted Nelson's famous quote. So, who knows Ted Nelson's famous quote? Which I quote pretty much loads. Any idea? Ten thousand. The same story. <coughs> Authority is malign. Okay, so he one of the one of his quotes is authority is malign. Okay, <laughs> people are stupid. <coughs> people are stupid, and and the world does not exist. So that's his quote, right? Authority is malign. So I personally think that the thing, the reason why gamification is working. Class, authority, i.e. in the form of these companies, wants you to do something, okay? And it will always go to the line again. It might not. But look at Google. Look at Google from being the start of you know, having a nice technical policy, do no harm, don't screw anybody over. Now they're doing no harm, screw everybody over. You know, it's just money, money and authority then kills them. Okay, so that's just my thought. But, you know, maybe, maybe we should go, maybe, I mean, gamification is the other way because we all use it. It, it, it's there in our psychology. So, yeah, maybe it's maybe counteractive. <coughs> or at least let like, people know that that's what's happening so they can decide to, to allow themselves to be given by the stuff. Okay. So, in that case,
Let's have a little vote. Should I identify your course work results so that everybody can see everybody else's mark and what they've done wrong, including plagiarism? Because that, that's not plagiarism, isn't it? I'm not saying anybody here has plagiarized anything. Yeah, it would do. If you were all named and shamed for, for being bad. No, no, we don't want to do that. Keep our heads washing. So let's go on to the more tedious part of the uh, of this. Uh, well, luckily we've only got 10 to 15 minutes left of the tedious bits for this session. So here we are. Collated principles. Again, as I've said, we've got a set of collated principles as per the other three chapters um, of this part of the course. Let's go. Let's just re revisit for people who don't know, just so we can get into our heads. What's the one good way of thinking about why there's different principles, different terms and different principles, and different books that promote those principles? What's the good way of thinking about it? You think it's good? Good job, it's good. 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 Good so what, what do we think the good reason? Why do we think that we've got all these different principles and different books with the, the um, four principles, discussing principles? Why do we think we've got them? What's the good reason? There's new work. Oh yes, and that's the reason. Well, there's new work. The situation evolves. <coughs> we've got different perspectives on different things, of course. So good. The bad reason is to sell books, that's right. So I personally think it's probably to sell books. So, what we've got here again is this idea that we've got a set of references, which is in which you more notes, as you can see, from different books, and we've got different concepts that are mentioned within those books. Okay? So, I've gone through and collated these into a set of principles which amalgamates those con concepts together under specific keywords. Okay? We've got some more here. Um, Obviously, it's two papers and lots of stuff. And we can see the references here, so we don't need to worry too much about these kinds of things. So, what I've done is distilled them down. The reason you know about these is because when you go out into companies, those companies will like a particular book. They'll like to talk about Schneider. They'll like to talk about Sharp, Rogers, and Chris, especially in London, because it's the one Rogers at UCL. Okay? So they like to talk about their books. They also like to talk about who can pronounce that. And what was he famous for? Flow, our flow diagram. But I can't remember. Okay. So people like this. So they have these ideas because they've just read one of these books. Well, we've digested loads of these books. Okay. And so therefore they're here so that you know what the terms are. But they're really overlapping terms or overlapping concepts. So when somebody talks to you about, oh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, enticement, well, they might talk about Craig. Oh, yeah, Craig says enticement. You know, Craig, you've got to entice people to do all that. But you also know that this is the same as these guys. Okay? All right. So, potted principles, and they're quite straightforward. Social. Include aspects of social um, collaboration Co-activity, pair activity. Okay. As you get older and you start to reach um, very old age, you'll find that in, in studies, people who are older like to work together better. Okay? Because one talks to the other and they make a joint decision about what's the right thing to do, especially if they're being trained on computers. Okay? It gives that kind of additional hesitance so that there's, there's more than people pushed over for the one person. Okay? So we've got this idea of social. We've also got this idea of progression, including components to facilitate movement towards goal. And play aspects of some fun. So everything we've talked about on the memorization website is here, it seems. 
social aspects, we're talking about social collaboration, we've got a group of people we know, they're our friends. Are they really your friends or just random individuals? Yeah, they, are. they are your friends. And okay. family, my dad's the worst one since I got here. Oh, right, okay, so you don't do us well, that's, yeah, you've got to, you've got to beat your parents, goddammit. Yeah. I was just going to add as well, the progression, like, they have a sort of metaphor where each of the words are a flower that you plant, and then it works out, like, when you need to water it, like, to revisit it, so it stays in your long-term memory. Ah, okay, so do they then um, send you email or stuff to get you to do that? Or how do I they get they you? can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so the progression stuff means that, you know, they'll keep you coming back, okay? And play aspects of fun. So we've also got aspects of fun, which is the flower. It's a lot nicer to see a flower growing and doing something than it is to see, to just have a, a cold piece of text that says, learn more now, you know, obviously, right? Um, and you also get aspects of enjoyment because <laughs> you're talking to a social group and you've got the progression. And it means that even in c cases where um, for instance, you know, sometimes uh, you might not speak very much to your friends, but you can talk to them about the competition that they're having. Okay. Okay. So, questions to think about. Okay. Questions to think about as you design your prototype. So, the first thing is social dynamics. This thing about social stuff we were talking about before. So, do you include stable... So here I'm giving you the kind of gamified Darth Vader view of this stuff, right? So we are going to include all these principles of engagement into your stuff, and you're going to be able to reap the benefits of ripping off all those poor innocent users. Um, then this is what you need to think about. Do you include suitable um, functionality to facilitate collaboration? That's the first thing. There's no way to collaborate, you're not going to collaborate. Social, all the aspects such as social communication are down to four. Now, what does that mean? Well, you say Dan's third year project, then you say Dan's third year project. But, Dan's third year project is this thing about pass, um, and you've got the sound and stuff, which is over, that sort of facilitates collaboration between the mentors and their team, but you've also got the social communication account for the chat facility, which doesn't directly affect the mentor and team process, but it is to allow chat. <coughs> Viewing like the real and virtual to facilitate better user engagement. What does that mean? What does that mean? So, I did I give a story last week about the uh, my uh, guy I saw at a conference who uh, comes from Japan and his mother wanted to have transmute, transmit sound or Sound, music from a stereo in the kitchen or in the main room to different rooms of the house, and how did the weeks and he facilitated this bit? Do we link to the real and virtual? He facilitated this bit by allowing, giving her an RFID tag stuck to the sort of tongs or a, a turkey baster so she could suck out the sound and go over to an RFID tag, which she put that on the, on the thing in the room and squeeze the sound into that speaker. Okay? That. So there, it doesn't really, it's, it's, that's about facilitating this engagement by the real and virtual. Can the team or group members interact support each other? Well, this is why we've got social networking applications that are only for work now. So social networking applications that are just for the workplace is specifically for this. Um, how do you use language and terminology which users may find playful? So we talked last week about um, uh, hand, uh, handbrake for the uh, people who like to liberate film content. Uh, and, uh, and you know, there you talk about, oh, if you've got enough time to go and have a cocktail, if you're quick, and it'll take us enough time to finish the queue, and then you say you've got to put the cocktail down because the, the, the film's ready. Okay. The same is true with Snickers. So you've got uh, Dropbox that has the little, oh, ooh, uh, you know, you've uploaded this amount, uh, why not have a Snickers? Okay, facilitate progression. We've seen this. We know we want to facilitate progression because in gamification, pretty much that's what there is, right? You move from level to level. People at different levels are part of a different uh, rarefied group. As the levels get harder, then it means that your group status increases because you earn more points, but also you're part of the people who've got to level 12 
and not everybody's done that. So therefore, you want to go back with your group of people and do more. Okay? So, we, so that's why you can sort of take progression. And that's why leaderboards and progression boards occur in workplaces in RAS2 and, and on most other applications that are work applications. Is there a motivation or reward? Okay. Sometimes there is. Various, uh, various technology companies, I don't mention, uh, have uh, rewards such as, such as uh, lots of uh, alcoholic beverages at, uh, on Friday. Uh, people who really want. Okay. Okay. Place of opportunities for friendly competition. Obviously, you don't want competition that's not friendly in this context. It needs to be friendly, okay? not uh, anything else. Okay. Does it facilitate play? Is looking for the playful and game like? Well, we'll know this because if we want to facilitate play like this, it's very difficult to do if, you bolt, if this is a bolt on trait. So if you're just bolting this off, you can do the other stuff. You can bolt on the social network, you can bolt on you know, the, uh, the leaderboards, etc. But actually making it a playful application is difficult to do unless you've thought about this on the ground, ground, ground up. Okay. It may just not be the right thing to do. So in some cases, <coughs> gamification, dynamic, social dynamics, technology may not be the right thing to do for your application. It just might not be. You don't want, how, how often does your GP go there, you go to your GP and he's inputting his stuff into his computer to go, oh, you know, if you gave you a vacation, I'd be better than the GP down the street. I'm diagnosing more good lungs this week, Dave. Come on. Of course not. I'm saying more people cross before this week. It's, a, it's all gamified. Of course not. Okay, so the same time, you don't want that. Yeah. So if you don't gamify your app, someone's going to come along and gamify it. <laughs> not quite a GP. But like. Or if you do it, you know. There's lots of reasons why you don't need your safety critical system to be gamified and not. Sure, yeah. Are, are GPs gamified in the way that they pay? I don't know. I 